Good morning, and I do hope that now truly, truly are free and that we can communicate one to another. It will be lovely if you can just send me a very quick check up saying, yes, the sound is there, yes, the image is there, that we can start. Okay, seems that we are all all set, and I truly appreciate your patience. I guess before we start, we should all take three deep, deep, deep breaths. At least I believe I need them. <laughs> but thank you for being here. And we are going to start with the information. Just one second. Okay, we are all set. Well, the first thing that I would like to do and is to try to concentrate ourselves and is to tell you <clears throat> a bedtime story, even if it is right now 12-12, okay? And the story goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful man that had this home in a garden. And although people came to his home and said, what a beautiful garden you have, he knew that the garden could be even better. So one day he takes a plane all the way south of Mexico to a place called Oaxaca. And in Oaxaca, there is a group of people that live on their own civilization called the Oaxacans people. Many of them do not speak even Spanish. But everyone knows that if you want someone that knows about earth and life, then you should get a person from there. So this man finds that elderly man and says, could you please come to Tijuana, my place? I would like you to see my garden. And so when they arrive to see the garden, the man says, leave me alone for a few minutes. And he walks around that garden. After that, he said, sir, come over. And pointed at one strip of earth. He says, you know what, sir? This is only sand. And to grow roses here, you need a miracle. Here we can plant a cactus if you wish, but nothing else. Then he points to another place in the field, and he says, Do you see that earth? That earth is very rich, but you haven't touched the earth for such a long time that now if you put water on it, the water just runs off. There is no water entering those roots. There is no oxygen arriving to those roots. That plant is dying because of that. And do you see that plan on the left? The one that is facing the sun every single moment of the day? Do you know why it looks brown? Because it's a shadow plant. And over here, it's getting burned by so much sun. So I'm going to move it to that corner. And by the way, do you see the plant on the corner? The one that looks gray, that is filled with fungus? Well, that is a sun plant, and over there, literally, is being eaten by the humidity and the lack of sun. I'm going to take it out of here and put it on this particular side of the, the field, the garden. And do you know about these particular uh, plants, these roses and these fruit plants that you have here? Well, I'm going to cut them. And I'm going to make their branches short because then the plant is going to receive a message and instead of wasting so much of its life on branches and branches and leaves, they are going to produce tremendous amount of roses and tremendous amount of many colored flowers and with perfumes. And the fruits are going to be hanging from the trees. And because of all this, you see that the life of this garden increases. But because this Tijuana area is kind of desertic one, then, sir, make sure that you water the plants two, three times a week. Please do that. 
Can you let me know in a month, three months, six months, a year, what is happening with this garden? And perhaps that man took that Oaxacan people, a person, to a neighbor. And he told the lady about her garden the same things. This is too sandy. This is too tight. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to bring some new earth here. And I'm going to allow for water and oxygen to enter. And I'm going to put some vitamins. And you need to put some water. And we are going to put here and move this plant to the sun and this plant to the shadow. And then perhaps the lady came later to the man and said, I wonder why he told me the same things if my garden is different than yours. But the question is, what do you think is going to happen if that man starts watering the plant and putting the earth that is needed and the vitamins and cutting the plants as like they should? What will happen a month later, two months later, five, six months, a year later? I tell you what happened that there is going to be the most beautiful garden on earth. And why is that? Because that man is very powerful and rich, and he brought someone from Oaxaca? Not. It's because in every single cell of the grass on that garden, of the roses, on the leaves, on the trunks, on every part of that garden, there is something built in here called the DNA that already has all the knowledge of how to use light, air, water, the earth, and the nutrients of earth. And if it so happens that the only trouble for those plants is that they do not have legs, they cannot get out of the garden to find what they need, they are stuck right in position, and unless I bring all those things to them, those plants are not going to survive. But what happens if I start doing that? What happens if I start balancing the amount of sun that they get with the amount of water that they get? And if the sun is a little bit because it's a shadow plant, also to put a little bit of water. <clears throat> As we start bringing something called balance, of light, air, water, earth, <clears throat> here there is an error, earth, and nutrients. What happens is that the cell will respond with the only response that it knows, that is called life. Life in the form that those cells can give life to you and to everything. For some will be, flowers will be all over the place, fruits, Growth will increase. The garden will be so beautiful that will attract the honeybees, that will attract uh, the bees, the hummingbirds, excuse me, the birds of all colors and that sing many, many things. It will attract other little animals because they will all understand this garden has life. And that life happened because someone decided with humility to go and seek what was the need of that garden, what were the needs of those cells. And the cells require what they require. It is what it is. And if you provide that, they will respond. So what about our bodies? Well, about our bodies, there is something that we need to understand. We are supposedly a human being with a body composed of around a hundred trillion cells. And those a hundred trillion cells, they are trapped. They cannot move out. They are trapped between two skins. And we need to understand that because it's extremely important. The outer skin, we understand it very well. We have sensei to use. And we try to avoid the wrinkles of an outer skin. But what about the inner skin? Well, I don't know if you are aware, but someplace someone said that God loved donuts so much that he created the human being in the image of a donut. 
Because that's what we truly are. We are just a donut. And obviously, we were not going to be just going around and around. So we received little legs to be able to walk. And also some arms to be able to hold on. And finally, some head and eyes to be able to see where we were going. But actually, we are a donut. And inside these two skins, every single cell, the 100 trillion cells of our garden lives in here. And these cells are trapped. And they cannot get the resources that they need for life unless those resources enter through this skin. They go to the liver. And then the liver sends everything through the blood system to the cells. And then the cells will breathe. The cells will eat. The cells will drink. And they will also defecate and urinate their metabolic waste. And that also needs to exit your body through the same hole. And if you just understand this particular concept, then you will know what to do regarding your own life, regarding your health, regarding everyone you want to help in the USANA business, and regarding families and everything else. And you will understand why Dr. Wes put Sanoviv here for you. So, the, the two skins are like this. One is that you have the mouth, the esophagus, your stomach, your small intestine, and your large intestine. is going to enter your cells and is going to kill one by one every single cell on your garden. If the diet that you eat is trashy, is very poor quality, then obviously the excesses and the lacks of nutrients is going to create a lack of balance in your body. And that lack of balance is going to take you through one disease or another. But if you provide the body with the riches of nutrients, then obviously your garden will be extremely powerful and extremely healthy. But here is where you start digesting, your, especially the carbohydrates. And for this, you, know, you need saliva. And you also need enzymes that are in the saliva. And to get saliva, you need to chew your food. And it's one of the critical parts here. Eat slowly. Chew your food. Break the cells in such a manner that the contents of the cells are spilled out on the saliva and the digestion starts. Do not eat like a dog in a hurry. You swallow in food that is already destroyed because then you are destroying part of your own life. The third one here is that here we digest everything just on the stomach, but let's talk about the proteins. And in order to do a good digestion here, you will need hydrochloric acid and also digestive enzymes. Because if you have them in the right proportion, then obviously the digestion will be done properly, meaning the 
solids are going to be like Lego, pull apart piece by piece by piece until all the Lego parts are free and you can build and you can use them to build any other game that you choose. But what happens if at this point you do not digest? Well, if your meal was filled with animal product, something happens that instead of digestion you have cadaveric putrefaction. And when a cadaver starts decomposing, as you see on the streets, when a dog gets killed on the streets, it's going to produce gas. It's going to produce anaerobic bacteria that is mostly harmful to the body. Then what happens if you eat fruits and some vegetables and you do not digest them? Then instead of digestion, you have a process called fermentation. Why? Because the stomach is hot, is humid with bacteria that was not killed by the acid and is uh, ready and nutrients are there to ferment and to create putrefaction. So fermentation is going to produce more gas is going to produce most anaerobic bacteria and even alcohol. So when you have a no digestion process, how do you know that? Very easy. Because as the gas is being produced, the stomach is going to inflate as a balloon. And the gas pressure is going to increase and increase and increase until the pressure is so large and the stomach doesn't give more of it, that liquid then starts and gas being pushed out like a volcano. And this is going to produce acidities. And you are going to say, oh my goodness, it's so much pain. I have so many problems. Your dress doesn't fit anymore. And then there is this, oh, this gas coming out of you and the burning sensation. Why? Because the stomach has a mucosity here to protect the skin of the stomach, but not the esophagus. So the stomach is going to start being burned. And if it is burned on monthly and years to come, then everything will be a scar tissue. And the esophagus can start to close. And then you start having all sorts of particular problems. And that's what happens when we do not digest our meals. But going back to this, over here, then, the acid, the stomach goes into 2 to 2.5 acidity, and it starts to drop food in here. The small intestine starts burning itself and says, hey, something is happening over here, help me. And it sends a message through the nervous system to the liver, to the gallbladder, and the gallbladder starts to squirt out the bile. So here is the digestion of your fats. And for that you need bile. And for that you need a good liver that produces good bile. And so the bile is around 8.5 pH. And when you put a substance that is very alkaline with someone that is very, very acid, there is a tremendous chemical reaction, even foams because of the strength of the chemical reaction. And it goes into neutral. And when it neutralizes, but by the foaming reaction, the rest of the substances starts separating so that here we can absorb our meal. And this is when the food enters the second skin. This is the critical part. And for people to say, I want to lose weight by having part of my intestine and stomach cut off, is one of the biggest stupidities. That's why you need, they are going to suffer of malnutrition for the rest of their lives. And when we lose the gallbladder and the bile is leaking all the time into the gut, then what happened? Well, when the acid starts to pass by, but you don't have bile to neutralize it in great quantities, the body shifts the water and it drops the water into the intestinal tract, so people will start getting chronic diarrhea, 
because that's the way that the body is going to start flushing out all that acid before it burns and irritates and inflames the whole digestive system. See, this body is very beautiful if we just understand it and respect it. But to have here, obviously, we get the trash. Everything that the body says, I'm not going to use this. We need to dump it. If we don't dump it, then obviously, this is the process of detox. And to have a healthy gut, some gut that can truly move substances in and out and help you with digestion, you need the lactobacillus, acidophilus. The bacteria that is aerobic, that works with oxygen, that protects your intestinal system, that produces some vitamins that helps you to digest the food. You also need fiber. You also need water with your fiber, otherwise it becomes thick. And you need movement in order to stimulate the gut with the movement so it can dump the things even better. You see... The fiber, you know all these things because of USANA, but there is the insoluble fiber and the soluble fiber. And the soluble fiber, when it mixes with water, it creates a type of a gel. And this gel traps the nutrients. So when the nutrients are entering the body, they are going to enter gently like this, and it's not going to be this huge peaks and then the descent into nothingness and it's better for the liver and it's better for the pancreas. Also, this gel will protect the layers of the intestinal system so they don't get damaged by the acids or the bile or the pancreatic enzymes and everything that flows through there. On the other hand, the insoluble fiber, this one do not absorb water. Oh, excuse me, I am wrong here. It doesn't turn into gel. It absorbs water and creates that the feces grow in size. And when the fecal matter grows inside, because there is water in here, there is also oxygen here, and it helps the aerobic bacteria to be alive, and it also helps that the feces come soft so they can move through all the intestinal turns and arounds, etc., without hurting the skin. And also, when we go to the bathroom, everything comes out easily into literally one piece, to the point that if you have enough fiber, you won't even need toilet paper to clean yourself. And this is the beautiful thing about that. So, now we understand that we need all this. If we help our diet, we chew our foods, we have plenty of fluids before the meal, not during the meal. If we have the hydrochloric acid, the digestive enzymes, the bile because we have a healthy liver, and then we detox ourselves and detox the liver, there is nothing that is going to happen except that the cells are going to respond with life. And what is life? A heart that is pumping correctly. A hormonal system that is producing the correct amount of hormones. Bones that are strong, that are not going to be fragile. A skin that looks beautiful and young. And everything is what life is if we understand the garden. So I'll stop here with this analogy. But if you want to fix these things, you need to take care of this. Once that you understand this principle and you clear the digestive system, the doors of the garden are open and you can do as you please to preserve and to continue life on a healthy manner. So that's why when people say, do you think that my disease is possible to help it here or not? Absolutely yes. It's always possible. Why? Because the cells, as Dr. Wayne says, they are not geared for disease and for death. They are geared for life, as long as they receive every micronutrient that they need and everything else. So, talking about micronutrients and so, another point I need to touch with you is about nutrition. And obviously, if you happen to come to Sanovive, 
we have the most, the two most powerful nutritionists here that can really do testing on you and to find out exactly the type of diet that you should be eating. So what I'm going to explain to you are very wide generalities. They apply to a majority of people, but please don't take this as the truth upon truth of all the truths that you have ever heard about nutrition. But hopefully with this you will get a round understanding. You have something called the macronutrients, and you have something called the micronutrients. Well, you need both of them, or the body goes into an out-of-balance situation, and this is. The micronutrients, we understand, that are the proteins, and although we get proteins from fruits, vegetables, and every single thing that we eat, in more or less degree, here we are going to talk more about animal products, because they are rich in this aspect of protein. Also, they are the carbohydrates. This normally we get them in great quantities in the cereals, <clears throat> in the grains, and then also the fats that we can get either because animal product, like butter, or uh, vegetable problems, uh, uh, products like oil, vegetable oil. Do we need these macronutrients? Absolutely. Anyone that tells you, let's eat a fatless diet, they are truly not understanding what the system is all about. So what happened over here? Do you know that 60% of our brain is nothing but fat, and that there is some fat that are called essential fats, that we need to take them from outside and we don't give them to the brain, the brain is going to suffer, and over the time you are going to have something called senilities, something called Parkinson, something called Alzheimer's, something called neurological degenerations. Do you know that the nervous system, every nerve that has myelin sheets protecting it, is made up basically of fat. Do you know that every single of the 100 trillion cells, the outside membrane, the inside membrane, and every membrane of every organelle is made out of basically fat, just with enough protein to keep it steady? Which one is the biggest cell of all? The one of an egg. Break an egg, look at it on the plate, it keeps its form, although it's almost liquid, why? Because it's basically fat. It's almost a liquid fat with a little bit of protein, just enough to hold it together. That's how our cells look like, and that's why we need fat. So I hope that this part is clear. So why we need fat, we need animal pr uh, proteins and carbohydrates. What is the problem? The problem is this, the lack of balance. For example, if I go to a restaurant, what is the menu on breakfast? Egg, 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 and more eggs. So you ask for an omelette that has three eggs, and those three eggs are cooked with oil, micronutrients. Then obviously you said, oh, please put cheese on me, and also some ham. And obviously the omelette will come with two or three pieces of bacon or sausage. And then they ask you, do you want French toast, or uh, excuse me, French fries, or something like that, some potatoes. And you say, yes, so potatoes come, and they are also cooked in oils. And then they said, this comes with bread or with hotcakes. How many pieces do you want, two or three? But obviously, I'm not going to eat my hotcakes with nothing. I have to put extra butter. And then I will put even some sugars on top, because it has to taste sweet. And just on one sitting, I had put around 15 or more micronutrients. And when I go to lunch, it's either you get fish, meat, or what else, uh, red meat or chicken, with a little bit of something around that you said, oh my goodness, they said a salad, and this is nothing but a salad. And when you go to dinner, they even charge you more money because the pieces of meat and fish and chicken are even bigger. So what happens if I repeat this tradition? 
and I keep on adding macronutrients, 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 that eventually I will have some substances that are in excess and some nutrients that I have in lacks of it. And the lack of ease in it comes. One tire of your car starts getting ruined while the other one is not even touching the ground. This is how it's happening. So what are the micros that you need? They are called minerals. <clears throat> they are called vitamins. Some enzymes. And also some phytonutrients. Things that give the color, the smell, the taste to fruits and vegetables. Where do we get most of them easier? Well, from fruits, from green vegetables, from non-green vegetables, from leguminoses like garbanzo beans, lentils, beans of all sorts, also from nuts and seeds. But most of our diet is with this aspect of lack of balance. So you have heard about many types of diet, and the normal American Canadian model looks like this. Eat a lot of these, less, less, and almost nothing of that. On this type of approach, the thing is to say, I need a balanced approach. I need to do this to my plate of what I eat every day, and I will put the fruits, the green vegetables, the non-green vegetables, the leguminoses, the animal products, and the cereals and the grains. And because nuts and seeds are quite heavy in nutrients, then you take only like two spoons or so of nuts and seeds. And if you start eating of every single type of product, believe me that you will get absolutely the perfect combination of proteins, carbohydrates, uh, uh, amino acids, uh, the fats, the vitamins, etc., etc. But then you also need to take care of something else. From the flea to the whales and to the elephants and giraffes and the horses and the dogs, everybody is a type of diet that is raw food. We are the only ones in the whole of creation that eat food that we have put on the fire. So what happened when I go, for example, and take a beautiful egg, as Dr. Wentz explains on his meetings? You take an egg, and that egg has every single macronutrient and micronutrient enough to produce brain, heart, eyes, lungs, digestive system, genital system, bones, muscles, skin, feathers, and a little chicks, when this breaks open, comes out. And why? Because everything for life was on that egg. If I take that egg and put some water on it and mix it, it will mix because it's hydrosoluble. So when I take an egg like that, like any other animal that eats eggs, I'm getting every single micronutrient and it's very easy to digest. But then I go to school and after four years they give me a degree and then all of a sudden I have a degree on stupidity and now I take that egg and I put it on the fire and all of a sudden any, any person, woman that knows how to cook, they will tell you that the fats will get burned. The proteins get denaturalized, meaning they were liquid before, now they become solid, and it's going to take more time and more effort to your stomach to break those proteins out. The amino acids, they also get burned. Just burn your cereal, so the carbohydrates. What about the vitamins? Oh, they get burned. What about the enzymes? Oh, they get burned. What about the phytonutrients? Oh, we'll burn them. What about the minerals? Oh, they are okay. Why? Because they don't burn. But because we are lacking enough resources on our earth that we are not replenishing the earth, and there is a lot of toxic chemicals on the earth now, we are getting not just the minerals that we need, 
we get unbalances of minerals and toxic minerals that are coming together with the plant, besides all the pesticides and fungicides and herbicides and fertilizers and colorings, etc., etc. And this is what we call a healthy diet. This is what we call a diet of a person with a college degree. This is what people, when you are doing medical history, they say, Doctor, I in a very good diet. Yes, but this diet is basically, basically 90% burn, and only 10% of that is what's making you survive. So, the ideal situation on this is that we take type of approach of around 70 to 80 percent of raw fruits, vegetables, etc., that we can eat, sprouted things, and that we only eat from 20 no, to no more than 30 cooked meals, and if we cook them, let's do it with gentleness, not till they are burned and ready like a cracker. So I hope this is getting clearer and clearer. But if you start fixing just your diet, if you start fixing just the aspect of protecting your uh, second skin, 80 to 85% of problems that you have will be gone. And whatever stays with you after two, three months of doing that, or four months, then you need some level of holistic medicine, like homeopathic medicine or some adjustments or things like that. And only a very small percentage, you will need some level of medical care. This is the path of the garden. This is the path of health. But also something else is very important, and is what you have on the brain, and is something called your mind. Why? Because the language of mind is not English, Spanish, Latin, Greek, or whatever. Every one of us speaks the language of images. In the screen of our mind, we produce images. So what happened? All I am perceiving to perceive the universe, I perceive the universe through my senses. And if what I am perceiving here, I create an image due to my memory banks that is called like this that is based on fear, then the brain interprets, interprets this as danger. And if there is danger, then the purpose of life is to save your life. And how is going to do this? It's going to trigger the sympathetic nervous system. Because this is the fight for your life and the flight for your life response. But what happened when that situation is? For example, some time ago, there was a person here that got a study. And I was going to interpret the study for this particular person. And when the person was coming on the hallway, I could hear her in another hallway saying, Oh my God, oh my God, I'm so scared, I'm so scared, I don't know what they're going to find. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And when she saw me, she started bursting into tears and saying, I'm so afraid, please hold me, hold me, I'm so afraid. And we have to go through 10 minutes just to calm her down. And at the end, the whole examination was just perfect. There was nothing to worry about it. But she had already created this fear on the head. And she was already hyper-reacting with the sympathetic nervous system. So what happened is that when you trigger the sympathetic nervous system, the body, to defend you, it will open the eyes so you can see more light and see the enemy and the route to escape. The heart will pump blood like crazy. Your lungs are going to take a tremendous amount of oxygen because you need energy. Then the adrenal glands is going to drop adrenaline and cortisol, which are going to increase the breathing and the heart rate. Your liver says, here you have all the reserves. Use them, but save your life and the arms will get tremendous amount of blood, and the feet are going to also get blood, because you need blood to run for your life, you need blood to fight for your life. But the thing, first thing it will do, it will tell the digestive system, you know what, stop, there is no digestion. I need all this blood, and I need this energy, and I'm going to divert the blood to the arms and to the legs so we can survive. So the digestive 
system stops. So if you are eating the beautiful organic food and taking your beautiful organic, or not organic, but the most beautiful micronutrients called USANA, and you are eating and taking the products like saying, oh my God, it's getting late and I'm going to be late and the boss is going to fire me and then my wife is going to divorce me, there is no money and this and this and this and going to be humiliated. Then we stop our digestion and everything that we have taken in is going to ferment, is going to create putrefaction and is going to go down the drain and nothing is going to help us or very little. On the other hand, when your mind, after perceiving the light or the sound that you are getting, triggers something, and there is a memory that looks like this, based on love, based on faith that God is with you and that everything is okay, then you feel secure. Then the parasympathetic nervous system responds, and then the relaxation and the healing response comes. And so, what happens if the parasympathetic nervous system comes up? It turns this off and it slows everything and the liver gets ready to receive and create your uh, extra support. And it tells the digestion system, it's okay, let's go for it and let's have the best of digestion. And this is how we heal our lives. Besides that, what happened? The hormonal system, the sympathetic nervous system, will trigger the hormonal system support, and then you are going to exhaust your adrenal glands. And when they get exhausted, just wait till you are 35 or 40 years of age with all the pre-menopause, menopause, post-menopause, and in-between menopause issues, because the adrenals can no longer produce the hormones that they were supposed to carry you until the day that you leave this earth. So your bones get destroyed, your emotions get destroyed and all that. And the sympathetic nervous system also tenses muscles. And a muscle that is tense is going to step over the hoses of the body called arteries, and if the artery gets squeezed, because now you are doing this, and it gets all squeezed like that, then the oxygen supply is going to go down, the energy is going to go down, and the cell is going to start to asphyxiate. Besides that, if a venous is collapsed like that, then the toxics that they were going to relieve they cannot go through this, and the toxicity increases. And if the lymphatic system is also squeezed, the toxic system increases, and this affects the immune system, and then you are open to all sorts of problems. And last thing is that that's why we need to handle something called stress in our lives. When we are stressed out, the brain activity looks like this, and you can see that on an electro, uh, uh, encephalo, excuse me, electroencephalogram. But if you learn techniques, for example, using your breathing to slow down your breathing, and I recommend you buy the book Entering the Vortex, that is from Abraham. Hicks. He has a CD with four different meditations to teach you how to breathe, one for healing, for well-being, for relationships, and for abundance. Because when you learn to go like this on your brain, and then you get to go like this, and then you go like this on your brain, then you can go into two places. One, you will fall asleep. And during the sleep, you will relax and you will heal. Or if you put your intent into saying, I need to withdraw from the outside because here you are outside using the senses. You want to go inside. 
then you can enter a space of total consciousness when you will become aware at the same time being disconnected from your body and you will start seeing, hearing and feeling with other senses senses that you call the senses of the soul and it is on this space of consciousness where you can have a glimpse of that small gate that takes you to a beautiful kingdom where inside you can find God and once that you can make that merging with you then you will walk out your life truly as a child of God knowing that you are protected because now it's not you it's you and God walking together through any sunny day cloudy day or dark valley and at that moment you will be able to use your parasympathetic nervous system all the time and when you need to use the sympathetic nervous system is when a drunken driver is crossing the road and trying to hit you you know how to jump and get out of there but then you will relax so with this I'm going to be finishing because it's already two minutes and we are running out of time but I hope with this you understand the why Son of Eve was created because here as you arrive you are going to be seen by the medical doctor by the dentist by the psychologist by the chiropractor by energy medicine by the nutritionist laboratories x-rays and any other specialty that you may need and out of all this then we seek for how to help you correcting from the beginning the inner skin correcting the stress on your life correcting your diet and yes giving you the medications that you may need to give the body the extra push because you have been carrying a problem for 10 15 years you have tried everything from chemos, radiations and surgeries and many many approaches and nothing seems to hold truth to you that's the dream of son of Eve but that's the dream that you need to carry as a, as a distributor that when you find somebody don't take the person I'm going to grow my business I'm going to help you to understand this because if you understand this you will do these things for the rest of your life and there is nothing that can happen except your garden becoming the most beautiful garden then whosoever someone sees you they will say how do you manage to look so happy to look so much filled with peace to be smiling to be filled with love and to look so young and healthy why then you can see them tell them about a man with a beautiful garden that one day travel all the way south Mexico just to get that Indian that open on his eyes to the beauty of the cell the beauty of what God has created and that it is on the respect of those laws and orders of the inner body that then the body doesn't have anything else but to flourish to flourish all the way until the day we are recalled back back home and we let go of this beautiful equipment called the body I hope with this you get a whole perspective of general things to do I thank very much anyone that decided to come back for a second listening on this and I do hope that one of these days when you try an approach and another and nothing seems to happen that you remember that there is a place here called Son of Eve and that there is the most incredible people the most incredible knowledge and the most beautiful love to receive you to help you discern to find out the causes of the problems and then to tell you how to rebuild your garden 
I thank you very much. We don't have uh, time right now for questions. I would like to close down here. But it has been a privilege to be with you. And I honor your time and the fact that you put your effort to be here. Have the most beautiful life. And I'll see you over here one of these days. Thank you.